My name is Nicholas Johnson. Today we're talking about how to make your own DIY concrete planters out of a couple of household buckets. And this is the Space Warehouse. All right, let's start out with everything you're gonna need to make this happen. It actually, it's really cheap too. First thing, some sort of quick setting concrete. I use Quickcrete, that's what they have at the Home Depot. This was like $5. Next up, four uniform in size. They don't have to be round, but I use wooden dowels. Little objects. They could be little squares, they could be little circles, they could be little octagons. Then you need two different size buckets. A big bucket and a littler bucket. Um, the little bucket is gonna go inside the big bucket and the negative space around that little bucket is gonna become your concrete form. These little dowels are gonna be the little stilts that the little bucket inside the big bucket sits on. That way concrete will go underneath it and those four little things will uh, make drainage holes so that you, when you water your plants, the water has somewhere to go if you put too much in there. You will need something heavy to put in the little bucket in the big bucket so that it doesn't float to the surface when you pour the concrete in. If you happen to have it laying around, you wouldn't believe just how heavy that size of a chunk of steel is. Next up, a drill. And then to make life easy, a stirring implement. Of course you can stir it by hand, but why, why do by hand what you can do with that thing? You need one empty five gallon bucket. One five gallon bucket full of water. I'll explain that in a minute too. And if you're gonna make more than one, the second, set of two buckets. This is a much smaller one. It's gonna be like a little baby version of the thing. I'm out of breath. You will need something sharp to cut open the concrete bags with. This is a knife. This is a knife that I made, actually, before I used to make videos and stuff, so I guess I'll have to do that again. Let's get started. Let's see how this all works. When you're gonna mix concrete, you wanna make sure that everything you're gonna use is available because there's the time issue. Like once you pour everything, you start mixing everything, you have to kind of like, Keep moving because the quick setting stuff does set quickly which i guess is the whole point of it oh also something lubricating normally i would have said wd-40 but there wasn't any on my little rack i have some lubricant from pb blaster but anything i mean you could use canola oil you could use anything slippery motor oil whatever you got it because you're going to coat the inside of the bucket so the concrete does not stick to it once it cures and then you're going to want to have a nice open space that you can really control. Um, if you know who Make Art Now Josh Yo is, he says to put everything in your shop on wheels. What a good idea that is. When I'm doing concrete, I have a full bucket of water and an empty bucket of water. And you don't use that much water at all, but it's really great to be able to clean tools off with. You don't want to let concrete dry in your tools. We're just gonna dive in. Start with a little bit of water in your bucket. That way the concrete doesn't get stuck on the bottom. Then, in a controlled manner, you're going to add mix. It's good not to breathe in at this point. We're looking for a pourable consistency. That's a little, that's a little crazy wet. Now, take your bucket, take four of your wooden dowels, put them in the bottom. Oh, well, yeah, they're gonna fall over in the next part. Take your lubrication. WD-40, cooking oil, whatever. Give that thing a good hose down. Everything's real slick. It's probably important to have these nice and evenly spaced because they will turn into holes that are at the bottom of your thing and I don't know, everybody loves uniformity. Take the small bucket, place it inside the big bucket. Take your something heavy really want to weigh down this small bucket. 
If you don't do that, when you pour the concrete in, it's going to just make that lift up. Take your soupy concrete mix Ugh. and try real hard to pour it in on the edges. I poured a lot of it into the middle. That is problematic. In fact, I poured almost all of it into the middle. <clears throat> uh, in the interest of transparency, I've learned a few things by, uh, well, completely destroying the first one that I made. The second one that I made is drawing, but still I think I learned something else. First thing, I this is really handy for like huge batches of concrete if you're gonna make like a big table like I made previously, or if you're gonna be making like a, I don't know, you're pouring a slab or something, you gotta make a lot. But I'm gonna say for this, I prefer, I prefer to mix with a little shovel. So you have more control, much less mess, and I wanna make it way less wet. I had, it was really wet, which is I think where we went wrong with that first one. Uh, I think it still hasn't dried two days later. So we're gonna go again. I'm gonna make a smaller one with a different pattern because I think this one's gonna come out just fine. I'm gonna go through this one more time. Making a concrete planter, take three. Start by pouring a little bit of water in a bucket. Then you're gonna put some of your concrete mix into the bucket. Using a shovel, oh, that's a lot of water. Mix it up. Our desired consistency is like moldable clay. Right now we're at pancake mix, so we're gonna go way more. Not sloppy and not dry. Close to a good consistency, but maybe a little bit more water would be helpful. And a little bit of water goes a long way with this stuff. The second place I feel like I messed up before, these little wooden dowels, these little stilts for your form. Um, well, A, wood is gonna grab the concrete. It's gonna stick to that. So we're probably gonna end up drilling through those, which is fine but I tried to pour it in the first time. I think before you put your second bucket or form in, make a layer around these things here. While you still have control. Make sure that your little dowels are making contact with the bottom and the bottom of your second piece. I guess it should go without saying that I'm doing this for the first time too. Well, the third time now. Luckily though, we're making planters. They just have to hold some dirt in a plant. We're not making like the second story stairs in an office building that need to support people and their life. So take your form, make sure your stilts make sense. If you can get them more uniform than I have done, you might be better off. That's gonna balance on those. Then, that's probably how sloppy it should have been in the first place. Then you're just gonna pour, put some weight on this. And you wanna pour this in around it. You know, if your concrete is really wet, it's gonna kind of do like what water would do and it's just gonna, this thing's gonna float on out of there. But as long as it's not that wet, all right, so step one, mix up concrete. Step two, pour concrete around the thing. Make sure you have the little stilts in the bottom because those are gonna make the holes the holes for drainage when we're all the way done. And the next step is also important and kind of magical. I hope that camera's still going. You can sort of beat on this and watch how it, 
that redistributes the water, I'm reminded that I did not put the lubricant in, and so that's problematic. But we'll we'll wrestle this out of here. It also gets out air bubbles. I'm gonna put this brick on top of here. For the very best results with concrete, you're gonna to wanna to sort of keep the very top just a tiny bit damp as it dries. So you should put a bag over it to start with. After a couple hours, just head on over and give it a little spritz. Give it a little tiny bit of water. I mean, again, we're just making planters, so that's not absurdly important for this, but. Okay, so, God, that was so fast once I've done it now. Sorry about the construction next door. That's probably never gonna stop. Then we're gonna come back, we're gonna pull these things out and we're gonna see how good a job we did. Okay, here we are on the other side of this thing. I have a redone one that I did the first way and the one that we just, that you just saw me do. pretty good. Feels a little wet and we're only halfway home. <laughs> uh, well, it's important to follow the guidelines with drying time. That's not the end of the world for me. I'm, I'll be able to just glue this thing back together. It doesn't have to hold much weight. It just has to hold a potted plant. So quick crete says four hours, but I'm going to say Quickcrete's not four hours. Yeah! This one stayed together. Just have to... Okay! One out of two's not bad be pretty easy. Somewhat smaller drain holes than I had initially planned for, but we have got ourselves a little baby planter. Look at that. A little bit of a uh, Gorilla Glue. This thing will be just fine. <sighs> just like that. <laughs> and you have a 50% chance of success. Handmade, personalized container based on whatever container shape and size you can find around your house or at whatever store you want to go to. Uh, my name is Nicholas Johnson. This has been The Space Warehouse. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this sweet, sweet content. Uh, or if you just want to see this thing behind me on my desk and from you know, moving into the future from now on. I'm not going to be able to lift that up. <laughs>